Hey, everything you see behind me here employs either hexagons directly or hexagonal tiling. And there are many effects that you can make with hexagonal tiling. And it's a little bit different from the standard square tiling. And I thought I'd make a video about it. So if that interests you, stick around. All right, so I figured we start by drawing a hexagon. So I have here uh, an empty an empty plane with uh, the origin over here and there's my hexagon and the first thing to realize about a hexagon is that it is very symmetrical and we can make use of that so uh, the first thing I would like to do is I would like to fold over all these other quadrants uh, so they all fall inside of this quadrant and the way to do that is by just taking the absolute value of the UV coordinate. So if this is zero over here, if I'm at like minus one comma two, then the absolute value of that gives me one comma two. So that's over there. And similarly over here, both my X and my Y are negative. Well, the absolute is gonna make it that they're both positive. And over here, the same thing. So <clears throat> now drawing a hexagon comes down to only drawing this quadrant, which is already a lot easier. Um, so one thing to realize here is that we have two lines, one like this and one like that. And if we can just stay to the left of this line and below this line, then we basically have our hexagon. So let's try to build that. So first I'll, I'll look at to the left of this line, which is, which is easy enough. So I have an empty scene over here. And what we could do is um, we could say float C equals uh, UV dot X. And then we could just do that plus equals C. And now I could see I have uh, just a gradient uh, going from, from the origin to, into the positive X direction. And if I go before here and I say UV equals the absolute of UV, then you see that just mirrors it. And now I could simply uh, uh, step this value uh, with a certain threshold value to, to get some, uh, to get that line. And I could change that to make a different size. Okay, fair enough. So that is for, for this line. Now for this line, it's a little bit different. So let me go over here. And uh, in order to get any kind of arbitrary, arbitrary line, we can use a dot product. So let me show you what that looks like. So instead of just the UV dot X here, I can say, give me the dot product of the UV coordinate and some, some angle. And the angle here is, is given as a ratio of X and Y. So if I just do one comma one, let's say, um, and I show that, then you'll see that it gives me a 45 degree angle. And, and, and don't forget here, we're doing the absolute, right? So this, like this, this dot here actually will just give me, just give me that. And then I fold it to give me, to give me that. Um, and so, but what I have right now is, is a ratio of one over one. So that's basically, um, that's basically that. Um, and um, I, have to, I have to normalize that because if this is one and this is one, then this length over here is actually the square root of two. So I have to, I have to make sure that if I do this trick, like this has to be normalized. So if I do that, you will notice that the size changes. Um, not normalized, but normalized. And that's just a minor thing, but it will be important later on. <clears throat> okay, so, but now the problem is obviously that the, the like my, my, um, my slope here, uh, here it's 45 degrees, um, but the slope of, of the top here is not 45 degrees, right? So it, like it's different. So. So let's figure out, try to figure out what that slope is. So now if I could find out what this triangle is over here, then I could flip that triangle on its side and then I get this triangle. And now I have a line here, my vector here 
makes a 40 uh, makes a 90 degree angle with the line that I actually want and and that is how you uh, you get the right slope um, so before we had a 1 over 1 uh, uh, meaning we had a 45 degree angle and now we have a different angle so we just have to figure out what this triangle here is and what this X and this Y is <clears throat> now because we're normalizing that value we don't really care about the individual X or the individual Y we just care about the ratio between the X and the Y so let's try to find out what the ratio here is between the X and the Y so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that triangle and make it twice as big and then I'm just going to say okay the side like one of the side lengths of my uh, hexagon here I'm just going to set it to one okay I could make it any number but one is 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 the easiest to work with uh, and then I uh, I will I would want to find out what my x is um, well one thing to realize here is that if my side length is one then then the other lengths here like this length is also one and this length here is also one right I can I can put a circle around uh, this point here and it will go through this point through the center and through this point over here so if I know that this is also one this line segment from here to here uh, then this line segment is also one so if I have both these line segments being one then I know that the entire line has to be of length 2. And now I can just use Pythagoras to figure out what this x is over here. So Pythagoras would say x squared plus 1 squared over here equals the hypotenuse of this triangle squared. And then I just have to juggle those numbers around a little bit um, to, to figure out what x is. And so x turns out to be the square root of 3 and that approximates to about 1.73 and then so if the x is 1.73 and the y is 1 remember we're going to flip that triangle around so so now my x is going to be 1 and my y is going to be 1.73 so let's fill in those numbers so I go back here and then my x is going to be 1 and my y is going to be the square root of 3 or some approximation thereof um, and now you see that the angle is uh, is the right angle uh, for a hexagon so now we uh, have to make it that we um, that we take the largest distance between the diagonal and the horizontal uh, distance that we started with so I over here I can do say C equals the maximum of the diagonal and the horizontal which was just the UV dot X and there is our hexagon so now we can change the size of it and uh, yeah play around with it so let's take this and put that in its own function so I'm just gonna cut that out over here and I'm gonna go over here I'm gonna do float hex dist it's gonna give me the hexagonal distance to a point in, in, in 2d space so vec2 is gonna take a UV coordinate and it's going to actually it's just going to take uh, I'm just going to call it P for position and then over here I I will replace that so here we have the distance to the diagonal and then over here we have the distance to the uh, vertical line and then I'm just going to return that return C and then over here we could uh, we could say hex dist and then throw the UV into it and uh, that doesn't change anything um, and uh, also we could look at the because uh, like now it's cut out to a certain distance but we could also look at the actual what comes out of this function which is just the distance to the origin but the hexagonal distance and you could use this already to play around and like and do things so we could say uh, give me the sign of um, the sine of this um, like times 10 plus I time let's see what that does so that gives me some sort of well that gives me this mm. okay so that's drawing a hexagon now the next thing is how can we tile how can we put hexagons together so that they tile properly um, 
And for that, let's start with just the tiling that we already know, which is the square tiling. So I'm just going to get rid of this here. Well, let's get rid of everything here. And then um, let's make a VEC2 grid UV equals the fract of UV times times 10, let's say, or actually, yeah, let's do that. UV times 10. Uh, and then we can uh, we can just look at that over here. So call.rg equals GV. So there's a bunch of boxes. And um, uh, how can we make hexagonal tiling now? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two of these square grids uh, and then I'm going to offset them so that so that the center of of uh, of the grid cells of grid A fall on the corners of grid cell uh, of the of grid B. So I'm going to make two grids A and B. Uh, so I'm going to go A over here and then I'm going to go B over here. Um, B. Okay, and now I have to offset one of them. And actually, uh, let me just take this out over here and, and put that in the front. So I'm going to do UV times equals, I don't know, some number, some larger number, so we can see some repetitions. And then um, uh, what this fract will do, obviously, is only take give me the fractional component of the number. Um, so it will basically repeat every whole number. Um, and so in order to make it that, that grid B is offset such that the center of grid B cells are on the corner of grid A cells, um, I just have to subtract 0.5 from that, right? So now I have grid A and grid B, we could look at that. So grid A should not change anything. Well, I changed the size, but that's grid A. And then grid B should be moved over a little bit so that they uh, fall on each other's corners. Um, okay, so that's one thing. And actually, let me put the UVs uh, in, in the middle. So I do a minus 0.5 over here so that my zero origin is in the middle of each box. And now what I can do is for each pixel on the screen, I'm going to check um, which grid I am closest to or um, yeah, like the center of which grid I'm closest to. And the way I can do that is I can say, um, if the length of A, which is the distance from a pixel to the center of, of the A grid cell, uh, is smaller than the length of B, um, then I can say, um, well, here, let me get my grid UV v back, so vec2gv, then I can say that my gv equals a, and otherwise my gv equals b. And now let's see what, what we have. Um, so now for every pixel, it just chooses the grid that was closest. Um, so now if I do gv here, gv, now I get something like that. Um, which is already a little bit closer to um, to a hexagon, but it's not a hexagon. And bec and why is that? Um, well, let's have a let's have a look over here. So if we have a hexagon over here, then the first thing to notice about the hexagon is that it is not as wide as it is high. Uh, and, and one easy way to see that is if I put a circle around it, you could see that from left to right, it does not touch the circle, but from top to bottom, it does. So that uh, that tells you it's it's not it's not square. Um, so if you put a square around this, then we would see um, it look like that. And right now, what we're doing is uh, we're just saying, okay, well, uh, this so this is my red, uh, this is my this is my A, my grid A, and if I say oh, I just go 0.5 to the right and I go 0.5 up, and I put my grid B over there. Well, that doesn't that doesn't fit that overlaps, right? So that's that's not correct. Um, and what we actually what what we actually would want, or actually also, if you go if you go up, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, and we put and we put another red square there, we see that also doesn't fit, right? It overlaps here. And plus, what we really need is we need this uh, this 
other hexagon to be moved up so far so that so that a green hexagon can fit in between there so a square box in this case or a square a square grid doesn't cut it in this case what we really need is a grid that is that is like this and um, so how can we do that well one thing to realize is uh, that if we draw a line from the center of one hexagon to the center of the other hexagon then we get the same the same line or the same hypotenuse of a triangle that we calculated before so so that that ratio is the same it's like one over uh, the square root of three so let's have a look at that um, so so we need to make our box so 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 right now our boxes if we just go back to to one of these our boxes are square and they need to be one white and the square root of three high and so uh, and so for that I am um, I, I have to make something else here I can't use this fract anymore because a, a fract basically yes it gives me the fractional component of a number but you could also see it as a modulo one it's like it's like how many times can it divide by one and then what's the remainder um, uh, but that goes that does the same for the x and for the y if i want a different for the x and the y then i can use a modulo and actually first first off so i had a fract here if i just replace that by mod comma one and comma one over here that doesn't change anything that's the same as fract <clears throat> but now what i can do is now i can i can do that repetition at a different rate in the x and in the y direction and so the rate uh, we already figured that out before which was um, let me let me make a vec a vector for that vec r for repeat let's say and that is a vec 2 and that is um, 1.73 and then 1 and now uh, I, I can repeat I can repeat it like that um, I'm not sure no, no, this should be the other way around I think 73 and so now I repeat it like that. And now also like over here, what we did was we just sub subtracted half of the repeat rate. Well, we still need to do that here. So we need to have half of the repeat rate. So I could just do minus R times 0.5, but because I'm gonna have to write that a few times, I, I, I will just take that out. So I'm just gonna cut that out, call it H for half. And then I'm gonna do vec to H equals one half of the repeat rate. So, so that's minus h, and then over here I'm also going to do minus h and minus h. And, uh, and then over here I'm just going to look back at my gv and see what that does. And look at that, there are our uh, hexagons. Great. So, um, so let's, um, let's make a function that, uh, that takes as an input a normal uv coordinate and as an output, it gives me that uh, this UV coordinate plus which cell I'm in, uh, because that's also very useful. Because if you want to do different things for for different grid cells, uh, then you need to know which grid cell you're in. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to make a a function that returns that returns the UV coordinate, which is two numbers, plus the ID, which is two numbers. That's why it's a vec four, and I call it hex chords x chords and it's going to take as an input a uv coordinate and then it's going to return me a hex uv plus an id so i'm going to take all of this uh, from here to here cut that and put that over here and uh, let's just uh, forget about the id for now let's just return this or return return and then vec4 and uh, then I'm going to do gv.x comma gv.y and then for the id I will just do 0 and 0 for now just to see if this even works so now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say hex chords and then I'm going to throw my uv into that and then because this returns a vector four and uh, like I request the vector two over here, I, I, I just have to swizzle that and say, okay, just show me the X or give me the X, Y of that vector four. And that didn't change anything. So that tells me that that, that worked. Uh, 
Um, all right. So now, um, now we have to get this ID value and um, spec to ID. And for the ID, uh, so the ID would be, let's say, um, it's uh, like zero and then one and two and three and, and the same up and down. I, I explained this before on a square grid, works the same, same way pretty much on a, on a, a hexagonal grid. Um, and so what I could do here is this, this UV and this GV or the UV and the A and the B, they, they increase at the same rate like uh, like to the right and to or like they increase at the same rate in, in whichever direction it's just like the only thing that's different is that they're kind of shifted right so what i can do here is i could just say um that the id value is uh, the original g the, the original uv minus the gv um, and that should give me uh, a fixed value in inside of each cell uh, um, the uh, uh, this will work out so that uh, so that that's one fixed value. So let's see if that works. So id dot x and id dot y. So that shouldn't change anything. And then over here, let's just visualize instead of my uv coordinates, let's visualize the id. So that's zw. And now you can see that that works. So if you want to see more of them, you can just multiply it by some smaller number. And then you could see that every grid cell uh, is different, but the pixels inside of the grid cell are, are the same. So you could use this to, to do something different for each, for each grid cell. Now let's just go back real quick to the, um, to, the U, to the UV coordinate. So this UV coordinate is a standard UV coordinate that, uh, that could be used, let's say, um, let's say you wanted to uh, I don't know, display the smiley. Like one of my other tutorials is creating a smiley. Let's say you wanted a smiley face in each of these grid cells. Then this UV coordinate would be great for that because it was built for that type of UV coordinate, which is just a straight, uh, straight UV coordinate. But if you wanted to make it that, let's say these grid cells, they blend nicely together, then, it, then a different type of UV coordinate would be, uh, would be better. Uh, uh, what I would do is I like instead of an X and a Y that is just the X that goes like this and the Y goes like that. Um, I think uh, sometimes it is it is better to have a UV coordinate that gives me the either the distance to the center or the distance to the edge. Like in this case, if you want to blend between two two cells, then you want the distance to the edge. And so let's let's make that. And we have a function for that, uh, which is the function that we started with this hex dist over here. So, um, so what I could do over here, let me just, let me just split up the GV into an X and a Y. And then I could say, um, uh, well, the X coordinate, uh, well, let's forget about the X coordinate for now. Let's just start with the, uh, start with the Y coordinate. Float Y equals, so for the Y coordinate, I want the distance to the edge. And so what I could do is I could say hex dist. So the Y coordinate is hex dist of the GV, the GV coordinate. And then um, let's just see what that looks like. So I'm just gonna leave the, the X coordinate the same. And then for the Y, I'm just gonna return that hex dist. And so let's see what that does. And now you can see we have that hex, hexagonal distance uh, from the center. But we don't want it from the center, we want it from the edge. And we know that our box is from, from, from the center to the edge is 0 0.5. So I could just do 0 0.5 minus that. And that will give me, um, that will give me the proper distance to the edge. And um, yeah, and, and don't get confused by the x here. So if, if, I just, uh, if I just null out the x here, and I call x over here, then you could just see the the distance from the edge uh, so it's black on the edge because the distance uh, when you're on the edge the distance is zero or close to zero all right so now for the x coordinate um, uh, if we have a y coordinate that is the distance to the edge then the x coordinate could be well it could be different things but like well, one thing could be just the polar coordinate which is like uh, around the clock where am i so for that i could just do um, the a tan 
of gv dot x and gv dot y uh, and then okay so now you could see that the that the x coordinate gives me the um, uh, the position around the clock um, there are there are other things that you could do you could say uh, uh, which sector you're in for instance uh, uh, like so which like which one which one of the six um, yeah, which one of the six sectors that you're in or uh, the distance uh, the distance to the center but the Euclidean distance not the hexagonal distance there's a bunch of different things that you could do here and for different effects uh, you should use different UV coordinates uh, but for now I think I think this this is good um, so uh, let's try to really quickly build build something cool with this um, so let's see here what could we do let's see okay so we have um well the first thing i'm going to do actually is i'm going to do vec for hex coordinates equals this so that we have all of them um, and then um let's see here so float c equals the the y coordinate there and then if i if i look at that here so i do call uh, plus equals C let's say so now I just hit the Y coordinate and now I can um, smooth step that so smooth step um, and um, I do uh, 0 and 0 0.1 let's say let's see what that gives me so that gives me some sort of grid or some sort of nice tiles um, so I don't, know. I don't know something like that and now uh, what we could do is we could let's say uh, change the size of e each individual tile uh, because we have the access to each individual tile now so um, and the way to and the way to change the size is, is by changing this number over here if I multiply that by some smaller number they're gonna get smaller and uh, so if I do that uh, based on the hex ID then I can have them different uh, for like then each one can be different so I could let's say throw it in, into a sign and I'm going to use my hex chords dot um, uh, dot z which is the x component of my id times um, h c dot w and then let and then plus i time let's say Let's see what that does. Yeah, okay, so that gives me a bunch of um, a bunch of hexes that all uh, that all scale based on their ID. And then obviously you could like make make cooler stuff if you if you play with this for longer. Um, but I think for now that's um, that's pretty much it. So let's go over here. Well, let's make them a little bit, oh, I want them closer to the edge here. So I just do 0 0.3. Yeah, whatever, something like that. All right, that is hexagonal coordinates and how to draw hexagons. Uh, they are very useful for very many effects. I hope you like this. And um, oh, also before I forget, uh, if you really like these videos and you wanna support me and you like more videos, um, I, uh, I would implore you to go check out my Patreon page. Uh, you can support me for as little as $1 per video, and it would help out a lot in, uh, in making new videos, getting better equipment, and, uh, and so on and so forth. Anyways, I hope you like it, and I see you next time.